Barbara, List is one of your guys. I mean, this man, you love him so. I do love him, yes. How did it happen? Well, I, mean, I think you even converse with him, is that right? <laughs> David, don't make me wacko, but uh, you know, every pianist, I think, who studies List music, you, um, you love what the man could do at the piano. I, I mean, besides reading about this wonderful, charismatic personality where people flock to him, and, and I mean, he, he aroused such enthusiasm, but it's the joy and the passion that he had for the instrument. And I, I have to confess, when I was younger, I kept wishing I had been born 150 years ago, so I could have gone to Weimar and sat at his feet, or could have been one of those beautiful ladies who, uh, who flocked around him. But um, the past three years, I have been living with this man because uh, we started this DVD series where I, I immerse myself in his letters because this is a personality who is so misunderstood, musically as well as personally. And this was a man who was so religious and spiritual and generous. Uh, I think people forget the generosity of soul. And even when he did these wonderful theatrics of his, uh, he felt that he was getting his inspiration from a higher source. It was always about going beyond him. Barbara, I would actually in all ways agree with you, wouldn't you, Marco? Absolutely. Rexa, you know what list means to you. You love him so. Um, this is a man that probably, I'm, I'm doing a lecture at Juilliard next Monday, four-hour seminar on list. Um, the title is The Greatest Life Ever Lived. Well, he uh, ten lives. <laughs> ten <laughs> wondrous lives. <laughs> and, and, life. You know, some, someone would say, how could he have been so great? Because Toscanini, the, the, the son-in-law of Horowitz, Horowitz would always say, why, why don't you play more Liszt? The symphonic poems, you only play Le Prelude, why don't you do that? Oh, I don't like Liszt, the man. And he said, the, why? What does that have to do with it? I, he said... Oh, no, nobody could be that good. That, no one could be that good. He was never good, you know. And, uh, and Horowitz said, uh, uh, looked at him, and, and he said, it must have been a pose, no, Toscanini said. And then Horowitz said something so perfect. He says, well, if it was a pose, it was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> so this was a, uh, a man of... Terribly of, religious and spiritual. Spiritual oh, well, of course he became, he that was, it's too complex to, mm -hmm. to even go into the, the vastness of this man. Everyone should study something about him. Why don't you, because he doesn't write just etudes, he was very inspired by the greatest etudes of that era called Chopin's, and he then said, well, I'm going to write transcendental etudes. And so, Barbara's going to give you the number one, just a little overture to the cycle of 12, the whole thing, 65 minutes. Maybe seven or eight pianists in the world could do justice to the whole cycle. And then you're going to do number two, number two in, which is a real Paganini type uh, virtuoso A2. Why don't you try? Okay, um, and let me, you think it, the number two is Paganini, but I always hear Beethoven fifth because of that, ba -ba -ba -ba, uh, that theme. But the first one is really just a warm up for the pianist at it's the like keyboard. An overture to the whole yeah. cycle. It'll so, only take one minute. So we'll warm up on the But piano. I want to tell you, it'll take many more than one minute to play it. <laughs> 